guys, today we're going to look at the guard for self-defense, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and talking it from a very basic perspective, and looking at uh, three to four of the top guard, or the basic guards we use in tri tac Jiu-Jitsu, but overall uh, for, for Jiu-Jitsu itself. One of the reasons why we include a lot of the guard, or not a lot of guard, we include the guard in tri tac Jiu-Jitsu um, and from a self-defense perspective is because it's one of the positions you do end up in. Uh, if you get knocked down, pushed over, uh, you just end up there. It's something that you should know how to do or know how to fight from or platform you should know how to fight from. Uh, but obviously we don't want to end up on the ground. So it's not like if we, during our classes, I don't allow my students to pull guard. Uh, when they're rolling, they have to learn to fight for a takedown or get back up their feet. Uh, but if you are on the guard or are on the bottom, uh, you need to learn how to fight there. So uh, the first one we'll look at is a closed guard. It's go over some basic concepts, techniques, and principles you need to learn uh, when you're actually using the guard for self-defense and just overall jiu-jitsu. Okay, the first guard we're gonna look at is a closed guard. And we're gonna talk first about, this is not from a training perspective, so I'm not talking about in a fight yet, I'm not talking about self-defense. Uh, I am listening to talk about rolling or training, and we're using rolling and training to develop our skills. So, a lot of times you see, especially white belts, beginner students, we start on our knees, you know, as a way to uh, you know, almost get a mini takedown or to start to roll a little safer. As you progress as students, you should be starting on your feet. A lot of times, people make mistakes uh, when they get past right away, is they don't have an initial grip and they don't have a way to get to the guard, okay? So when we're starting on our knees, I do allow my students to pull guard, but the first thing you need to look for is getting your first grip. And one of the first grips I always look for in Jiu-Jitsu is a cross collar grip. Alright, obviously he's me fighting off my, fighting that. I also don't stay in this position. Typically, when we're here, I start getting in a combative stance. So I'm on my toes, I'm on my ball, my feet. And I'm looking for my grip, my cross grip. It's almost like I'm creating a frame and a shield. All right, so you think about when you stand up in our fence position, it's very similar, but now I'm on my knees. And I'm trying to create this. I don't want him to have this wrist. I don't have to have this grip. But what I am looking for is his bottom leg is going to shoot through and come to his hip. So almost like I'm doing a technical stance. I'm going to come through and I put my foot on the hip. Now if I get safe control here, great. If not, I'm just trying to pull him in to my guard and get control. Okay guys, right now we're talking talk about, so we came down, we had a cross grip. I want you guys always to think about having two points of contact. Typically, sleeve, I'm sorry, uh, uh, collar grip and sleeve is the best. Double sleeve is okay for setting up more of a kind of a, uh, like a spider guard or a lasso guard. Double collar is rare, but you can use it to break down structure. Uh, there's a competitor, a BJJ Black Belt, Abraham Marte, uh, who uses that a lot to get them off the side. But we're talking very basic level on how to control the guard. So, first off, see how I'm being lazy right now? My legs are low. I want to have a nice high guard. So the back of my knees are actually starting to break his structure down. So now he has a hard time standing up because he's carrying my weight. If I have my guard lazy, of course he's now able to posture and escape. His objective is to escape my guard. I've got him wrapped up and I tell my students, I have more options than he does. I can sweep him, submit him. I have four points, full limbs to use, all right? He's glued to the ground right now. If he stands up, it's a little different, but still he's glued to the ground. His feet are not in play. He can't submit me from here. If, you, if, he, if someone is submitting you from top guard, uh, you need to fix your guard. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just don't mean to think about it. Uh, but, I can do a lot of things down here. So this guard becomes very dynamic. His obje objective is escape, and my objective is to sweep or submit. Uh, as a white belt, your objective should be learning how to control and defending it. So it's starting off there. So I have my collar grip, I have my sleeve grip, and I make sure my hands are nice and tight. When I'm looking for anything he starts doing, so if he starts pushing, uh, cameraman, can you come right behind me, please? Or Pete, mm -hmm. Pete the cameraman, okay. So, what Sean's we do is looking to open my guard. So if I have my grip here, he's gonna start looking to open that up. This happens all the time, and why I see a lot of white belt students or beginner students, they ignore this response. They ignore their, their leg getting pushed down. They're still holding on, over, hold on, and they now are opening their guard and he's starting to pass. So, when we're in here, any attempt, whatever side he starts pushing down, so whatever side he is, I need to start now getting that sleeve control and bringing him back in. So he's going that other side, I'm, com I'm coming to that side, sleeve control, and bringing him back in. Very, very important concept uh, when you're actually defending is I don't want him to start opening or having control of my legs or getting ahead of time. Uh, we talk a lot about tri attack martial arts timing. If he starts pushing and opening my guard first, he is ahead of time, and now I need to catch up. So, 
from now on closed guard control, we're gonna go to our scissor guard control. Say we got a nice strong guy on top, he's hard to keep down, and eventually we feel like he's gonna open our guard, we're gonna preemptively open our guard for it. So I'm gonna put my foot on the mat, shrimp my foot, feet away, and create a little space for my knee to drive across his chest, all right? This is a position I like for scissor guard, so if you come up, you see I have a knee shield, almost dividing his body at a 45 degree angle from his shoulder to his hip, and then I'm using that collar to pull him in and control there. Now my knee and hand work uh, together. Now I'm taking this hand and wrapping it. Now, if I leave this hand free, what's his natural response? He's gonna push down my leg to step over and pass. That's his doorway, right? I need to eliminate that doorway. So that foot, I keep my foot on the outside, but you can keep it here or at the hip level. I am closing off his path by this foot over here, this foot over here, and not preventing him to use his arm from this position. So this is a very, very powerful guard called a scissor guard, a cross, um, something called a cross guard, knee shield guard, whatever. And then from there, you can also start switching your grips a lot. I like to play this game a lot, where I start coming off to the side. Again, this is, when you're in this guard position, you get pretty creative with what you can do, but very, very basic principle of getting from one spot to the next, start defending or start attacking with sweeps. I have a scissor sweep, knee push sweeps, tons of submissions from here, great position. So now for your next guard, we're gonna look at the half guard knee shield, okay? So let's say he does step over that leg. As this is very common. Cameraman, can you see behind over here by any chance? Okay. Now, what I, first thing I have to do is I have to control, right? I am looking to get and lock this leg in. Because if they're stepping all the way around, so step all the way around to my side. Now I'm getting my guard passed, okay? So he got past one leg, right? He was here. He stepped over, he got past one leg. Now I need to trap this leg instantly, instantly. So when I'm there, I'm just wrapping it over and making sure it stays connected. Again, a lot of white belt makes a mistake of letting this leg get lazy and it's a simple pass. So we want to keep that here. Next layer of defense is our actual knee shield. So I have to take camera not to come around again, but camera hands can see my knee shield, I have my foot almost the exact same spot I had for scissor guard, which was that foot and that hip and knee dividing across. But now this knee becomes very dynamic. I just don't want to leave it here because he's going to do a lot of different things with smashing it, trying to step around. He's going to try to pass it through to come uh, to do like a knee cut pass. So I have to have this knee very dynamic. Some of you guys are putting in the hip, but you're going to be moving around. When your knee shield, I can keep my scissor grip, but I don't like, uh, just stand up and look. You, when we're here for the scissor guard position, this grip works on pulling and wrapping. But when I get the knee shield, it's better to have like a frame. So I'm actually will end up working on switching my grip because if you can see, I have a stronger body position and posture there or control there compared to if I start doing this and he wants to push me down, it's very easy to come down. So if we bring that back to the scissor guard, or knee shield half. If you can see here, it's like my elbow's pointing down. I don't have that same strength. But now I bring that elbow up, that thumb in, I have more control over his body. Now the other hand is always framing to the inside. All right, well, there are times you'll, you can uh, keep that grip again here, or you'll go to the leg, but for a very basic level, this is your knee shield. You wanna be able to prevent him from coming forward, keep him controlled, locked into you, and prevent him from this position to go uh, that way. All right, again, this is his doorway right now, so a lot of guys are gonna start trying to pass this way. You are preventing that pass from there. Okay guys, I wanna switch positions and talk a little bit about the knee shield itself. So let's let the hand go. So, Sean is here, okay, he's got his knee shield. I, this is, I need to get, right now, the only way to get around is this way, okay? There are times when I will go around the other way, but from a sprawl, sprawl pass, which I'll kind of briefly talk about. But, my objective as a guy who on top and passing is to clear this knee first. A lot of different ways, a lot of guys will visually start to start smashing it down and trying to hug the leg. This is the one I, I like a lot. I typically call it smash pass, very basic. I'm gonna bring my level down, get my legs out, and now I'm gonna hop this way or hop that way, depending on which way I feel is more open, okay? Other times, guys will work to clear this to the outside, whether it's bringing that elbow landing clear and coming through the middle of the pass, another pass I like a lot. 
So the, so the guy on the bottom needs to be very dynamic with that knee. All right, if he feels me pushing forward, he needs to wave it up in my armpit. If he feels me trying to come through, he's got to drive it into my armpit that way, right? So try to come across a cut. So anything I do, that knee stays with me. And again, for white belts, beginner students, just learning how to control in this position is so much better. Uh, it, it's so it's so beneficial to you. I think all about when I'm when I'm rolling and grappling, it's like I'm looking to control and not frustrate, but control and like shut that person down. And then when they're like, huh can't do anything, I gotta try something else, that's when uh, I, I typically counter. So if you establish great control, where you're like, no, nope, you can't do anything, I, I own you for that split second or five seconds, whatever it is, and then it's like, it becomes much easier for you to start attacking and, and going from there. Okay, uh, the knee shield itself, let's just talk a little bit, uh, two ways you can apply it. Um, knee being a little bit of a bigger guy, I tend to have a very floating knee shield. I have I've, I've confidence in my ability to keep them away. Uh, or, because uh, I, I don't, I have a hard time doing this one, but this one's a great one too. So I actually start locking in the hip. And I now can, sorry buddy. Okay. I now can start breaking down his structure by taking that top foot, putting it over my bottom foot, then driving my knee in. And one of like, my favorite sweeps is just that knockover sweep right there. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, and so if, you, if you get it right, it's a lot of pressure. Um, smaller grapplers have a really, I think, easier time getting that knee into that spot. Uh, and keeping it there, driving it in. Uh, it, it's, it's a great spot. Uh, Kyle Terra does this a lot, and what he does a lot is he tries to take this bottom foot and curl it up, almost like that, and it becomes a very tight, uncomfortable guard uh, to deal with. You can see by Sean's structure, just by having that, I'm, you know, uh, you know, I'm completely changing his structure and balance while giving myself a lot of power. And obviously you can see I can start opening up a lot of different ways. I use positions like that all the time where I start getting that sweeping motion, but I use more of a dynamic, compared to that locking in, because I just feel a lot of strength that way to get back to a variety of different guards to escape or hit some sweep series off that. But it's important as uh, any, any student, white belt or blue belt, or you know, purple to black, whatever it is, that you have to start developing your own adaptations of guard itself. You know, I can give you my way, Sean can give you his, for me can give you his, but you're gonna have to start discovering and playing what kind of works for you. But I highly recommend you kind of start off with those three, closed guard, scissor guard, and half guard. We'll do one more uh, standing open guard, which you end up in a lot too when your opponent stands up. Okay, first off, I'm going to talk about, let's just say I haven't been grounded, whether it's, it's definitely self-defense related and or just rolling related. You got taken down, uh, maybe you got created some space, maybe he stood up to pass your guard and he's far away from you. The worst thing I've ever, and I see people do it all the time, so I'm going to address it right now. The worst thing I could do is lay on my back, I put my hands where I have no grips, no nothing, because I'm such an easy target. He just grabs my feet or my pants and just throws them to one side and he's past my guard. It's like stupid, don't do it, okay? So think about it. you're going right for a technical stand-up position. And I'm getting back to where we started, very similar to when we started when we were on the ground pulling guard. I'm now basically in technical stand-up. I'm creating some space. So any way he moves, he moves my right. I just stay with him, he moves back to my left, or I start coming back up to my feet. So this is something that I do all the time. If I have no grips on the bottom, and someone is over me, I'm not even playing the game of trying to get in there and close the distance. I was like, I was getting back to my feet. Uh, you're not on top of me. So it's really important, so guys, so when you end up in this position, say, say he, uh, he opens my guard, all right, he steps away from me, like, oh, you know, so he, he opens my guard, he gets the space, I should be here. I've gotta be creating space and getting back to my feet or not allowing him to come through because it's, I'm, I'm really vulnerable without any grips. So um, when we do get open guard, I should, if he's standing up, I should have control of him already. Uh, if, he, if I, I have no, if I get knocked down and he's not, I, I have no grips yet, I really should be working to get to at least this position and track him and get a hold of him, uh, get a grip, or I should get back to my feet. So let's start off, uh, let's go up actually how to pull, close guard. Uh, really quick because we have a lot of videos on this already on YouTube. Yep. So, just as a review, cross collar grip, foot in the hip, and I'm here. So this is my basically standard, let's turn it a little bit this way, open guard position. Now if you were to change my plane, if you thought about this is the ground, I should look almost like I'm sitting in a technical stand up again. I've got, I got a loose knee shield here, okay, I'm in my frame already. And ideally, I have to have, I mean not ideally, I have to have a grip. 
it's sometimes very hard to get that collar, all right? So I'm always, at least on one, uh, my, one of my favorites I taught in class recently, I've been doing a lot, is cross grip sleeve control and pant control or ankle control, okay? This works for no gi too, just holding their wrist or sometimes you don't even need that, but it's a little more advanced. So let's go right to the here, okay? So this is a really good base. about where your feet are? Okay, thank you, Sean. Okay, feet are very important. Your feet need to think about wrapping the hips. So anytime I'm here, my feet, oh, sorry, buddy. I'm trying to stay glued to his hips. My, my hips are off the ground, but I can kind of windshield wipe my feet. But I'm always, I think like his hips and his top and sides are shelf for me. I'm now doing the same position as a scissor guard. I'm trying to keep the, my, my, my left toes on the outside of his hip, my right toes on the inside. I'm not letting him get pushed and put to the inside. I'm just kind of staying in this position now in my grip. Now, if I'm worried about self-defense, obviously I'm off the side a little bit more, all right? Now I'm kind of creating some structure. I can start kicking kicking, whatever, okay? But for, for Jiu Jitsu, for training purposes, I like to see my students here first because a lot of basic sweeps. Or if I have control, just turn a little bit, this position, okay? So those are your kind of two basic gripping grips I, we should see, is your scissor, it's like your scissor guard grip or your cross guard grip. And there's, a, there's different variations you get into both. And from there we have, I mean, I just posted a video about a tripod sweep off there, the Uma Plata series off there, I have to see the kicks off of there. And then we have our whole knee push series off of this one. Uh, and again, we'll pot it from that one as well. So there's a lot of things you could do uh, from angles, guard positions, but when you're not standing or you're grounded and someone is standing, you guys need to think about going basic old school combative, like technical stand-up position, keep him away from me. If I if he's so close I can't get I can't um, I can't get back to my feet, I should just be here and look and I'm looking for oh, I've got my, I've got my control. I gotta find some, I've gotta find a grip, and we'll go right back to the beginning of this video where we talk about first establishing that grip. Same thing here. I have to establish a grip first, or he's gonna run right by me. All right. Um, yeah. Anything to thoughts, questions about the? Nice no, um, for uh, for jiu-jitsu uh, self-defense standpoint. When this hand is out, you're thinking to always bring it back so you can have your split frame if that's coming in. So he's out trying to grab, and that's coming back in. And now he's, he's got me in this position, he's pushing me away, I can't, I couldn't hit. My, the right side of my body was useless. And uh, you know, he said a really important concept, the right side of my body was useless. And that's what I like to do, and no matter what. So let's go back to pull. All the way down. I'm basically saying his right side of his body is useless. His right side of his body is useless. I'm sorry, is this your right side? No. I'm side. sorry, well. <laughs> Yep. His, so, uh, his, uh, yeah, his left side is, yeah, <laughs> on my right side, your left. So his left side is useless. Go back up to standing guard. His left side of the body is useless. Uh, what else before? Oh, knee shield half. Come back down. Yeah, same thing, left side. Left. I'm trying to shut down side, shut, shut down parts of his body that allow me to attack or escape. I hope that makes sense. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah. All right, cool, cool. All right, guys, uh, quite a long series, but I think it's really important for you to understand uh, basic guard concepts in Jiu Jitsu overall, uh, but something we dealt with those four, the basic ones we focus on as a white belt for tri tag Jitsu. And I, I, I can't say enough. I think is you, you have to understand and know these guards because they are, they are the foundation of your guard. Uh, and developing a guard in Jiu Jitsu is, I think you need it, you can't ignore it. I ignored it for many years, for my first you know, few years of Jiu Jitsu or more, more uh, and then now, now I've spent a lot of time on it because it's, it's such an important tool. Uh, that's all I gotta say. Oops, we'll see you soon.